So today we're going to be talking about the batch process tool, how to run a batch process. We're going to be writing some command scripts, to turn on on and off levels, and also attaching a reference. The batch process tool is a tool within MicroStation that utilizes a script, or some would call it a command file, filled with key ins to execute commands on a selection of DGNs determined by the user. Scripts are usually a text file with those key ins that can be either MicroStation commands, VBA macros, or MDL applications. Um, to find the batch process tool, we would go to File, and under the Tools, we would find the batch process tool. Let's go ahead and click that now, and you'll see the batch process dialog box open up. Um, okay, so let's go over some of the buttons here. First button is the new batch button. Obviously, or right now this is grayed out because there's no files in our queue, but once we place some files in here, hey, we should be able to select this button. The next button is the open existing batch process button. This will allow you to find previously saved batches uh, or previously saved batch process jobs to rerun. The next tool is the save batch process, That's simple enough. The fourth one is the add files slash directories to batch process. So this will help you queue up the files on which you want to run your command script. There is another way to queue up the these files, and that can be done by just dragging and dropping files into the process path window. Let me go ahead and do that now. Give me a second here. OK, so these are the sheets I'm going to be working on. I'm going to go ahead and select this first one, drag and drop it. And we're good here. OK. Um, the next button is another one that's currently grayed out, and that's the remove. So if I wanted to remove, say, for example, this sheet here, I would click on it. It would turn red, and I could click on this remove files X button to remove the file from the queue. And the last button here is the process batch process job. And so that's obviously to run your command file on your queued up files. And there is a checked checkable box here, which is process selection only. So if you have several files in your queue, but you only run, want to run your command file on a select portion of your queued up files, you can check this box here and you'll be able to do that. The next section of the batch process dialog box is the command file section. So we have a bar here to show which command file we have selected. Currently, there is none. The ellipsis button will allow you to browse for command files that have already been set up. The pencil button will allow you to edit command file, but edit the command file that has been selected. In this case, none have been selected. That's why it's grayed out. So we will now go ahead and create a new command file to turn on a level throughout a set of plan sheets. Okay, to do this, I do want to first run through the commands in the key and dialog. So to bring up the key and dialog, I'm going to go to the search bar in the ribbon, type in key. That should allow me to open the key in. I move my key in over here so it doesn't overlap with that batch process dialog box. And the key in that we're going to be using specifically for this uh, command file will be the level set display key in. And so this key in works by typing in level set display. Then it asks me if I want to turn the level on or off or if I want to toggle it. In this case, I want to turn it on. And then it's going to ask me for the level name. In this case, the level name is DIM. So once I type that in and hit enter, you'll notice that my sheet, all of the line work on that DIM level has been turned on. And so that's the command script that I'm going to be setting up in order to turn on this level through a set A of so to do that, we're going to go back over into the batch process dialog box and select that create a new command file button. 
going to ask me where I want to save it. I'm going to go over to my batch process data set. And select new command script. Since this is going to be a turn on a level, I'm going to go ahead and, and type in as a name for the command script turn on level. Let's go ahead and hit save. And the template for the command scripts will pop up. And then we're going to go ahead and type in that key in that we just used. It's going to be level set display on and then the level name in. Okay. And then finally, to make sure that we're setting or we're saving the settings upon closing each of the files in our batch, we do want to use in the key in file design. So if I were to type in my key in file design here, notice that it'll say save settings. So that's a that's a good way to make sure that we're saving our settings and making sure that that level stays on. I'll go ahead and type in file design, and then we'll go ahead and hit file save in our notepad, and then close out of the notepad. So notice that once I close out of that, the command file that's selected is the one that we just created. If I want to go back and say I want to turn on another level or turn off another level, I can hit that edit button, pencil, and it'll open up that the selected command file uh, pretty quickly. OK, so now that we've done that, I do want to run this through not only this SW3P underscore one sheet, but I actually want to run it across all of the files in that folder. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the file name down here in the queue, select the entire name, and we're going to swap it out for an asterisk. So that's going to so I, let, let me let me show you what that's going to do. So once I go over here and click on this process, that's process job button. Notice that all of the SW3P sheets in that folder have been selected and have been queued up to process. So now that we have that done, we'll get we'll go ahead and process the batch job. So I'll go ahead and hit the process button. And you'll notice that it goes and begins opening up that first SW3P plan sheet. And it'll go ahead and turn on the level and then save my settings and move into the next file. So let's give it a second here to and on or go ahead go through each of the batch process jobs and turn on those levels notice that the once you process that first sheet it'll it'll show the status as processed and then it'll show the amount of time that it took to go through open up the sheet execute the key in and then close the sheet out and move into the next one. So that first one looks like it took a little while, but the SW3P sheet 10 looks like it was four seconds. So there's a bit of a variance there, but overall it's a lot faster than if I was trying to open up those sheets and make those changes myself. And I think that's one of the, the great things about the batch process. It, it allows you to execute nice and nicely and efficiently across a, a large data set. So I'm running this only through the first 10 sheets, but I will I do want to point out that if you, we notice here SW3P6 comes up twice. So that means that when we queue up the files in the batch process, it will select all of the models that have that those, that have any sheet DGNs or that are that are present in each of the DGNs. Okay, so we're almost complete. So looking at the last two sheets here. Okay. 
Okay, and you will notice that once all of the seats have been processed, that pause or process button changes to a done button. So I'll go ahead and hit click that now. Um, I do want to mention before we close this section, um, the EN that we use, that level set display on, will work only for levels that are in the this sheet DGN. So in this in the next section, I'm going to be talking about how to turn a level on or off that would be located in a reference of this sheet DGN.